Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Justine, and today we're gonna be unboxing the new EOS M5. I'm excited about this because I had the M3, which was their previous version, and I loved so many things about that, and this is the upgraded version. I will also be taking it outside to do a little more comprehensive test, so stay tuned for that later in this video. But without further ado, let's unbox this so that we can get into the fun stuff quicker. The first thing we've got is the battery charger. Just judging by the look of this, it looks like it is the same charger as the M3, which will be great because I'll be able to use the charger from my previous version and also the battery. We've got a USB mini. Here's our battery. The camera strap. And here's what we've all been waiting for, the body. Take a sweet look at this. So I absolutely am so into this matte black finish that they have here. This one kind of sets itself apart if you can tell by this color. I'm not really sure what color. I, I want to call it like a gunmetal type of color, but it's still a nice matte black, shiny silver. It looks really good. So one of the things that also makes this camera slightly more unique than some of their previous versions is I haven't seen a Canon camera that does this the LCD screen folds down. So this is such a better placement than when it folds up because a lot of times I'll have a microphone or a light or something on there and this just gets in the way. So the only thing that I can see this interfering with is if you're shooting on a tripod or something like that, but you will still be able to fold it down to be able to see enough of what you need to see. But with most of these cameras, you are able to connect them to your phone. So you're actually able to use this as a second viewfinder, which I do for almost all of my videos when I'm shooting anything, even like this one, because it's far away so I can actually see what I'm seeing on my phone that's on the camera. So you basically can use your phone as a viewfinder. Camera inception. You're also able to view and save images and videos directly from your phone. So I can scroll up here and I can save these pictures directly to my phone. Directly from camera to Instagram in seconds. So let's pop a battery in here. Take this for a test spin. So the lens that I would probably recommend getting if you don't want to switch lenses out very often is this is the 18 to 150. This gives you a wide enough range that you'll be able to zoom in and get some shots that are far away, but it will be far away enough when you're vlogging to still sort of get yourself in frame. Now, I love being able to have sort of a wide angle lens view, which is why I can't wait to try this one. This is the 11 to 22. So this will give you a much wider view if you're vlogging. And this one over here, is the 15 to 45. So this will give you a little less of the fisheye look. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with so many different lenses, and that's gonna really impact how you shoot your videos and what you carry with you. While we're on topic with lenses, this is the EF EOS M mount adapter. With this, you can attach it right to your M5. If you already have a bunch of other Canon lenses, this will allow you to attach them right to this guy. It's also got a little additional tripod mount here, especially if you're using huge lenses and it needs the extra stability. We've just turned this thing into a monster. So this EFM mount will allow all of your EF and EFS lenses to be compatible with the EOS M5. So right here's a little lock setting that's actually kind of cool. So you have to push this, as it's telling you here, to push this forward, and then you rotate to start using the camera. So one of the best things about this camera is it's small enough to take with you everywhere you go, but it also has audio input, especially because you never know what scenario you're gonna find yourself out when you're vlogging or filming. So these are the two microphones that I've currently been using. This one is a cute little Rode microphone. And this is a Canon specific DME1 microphone that they recently released this year. The best part about this little guy is you don't need a battery for it. You basically plug it in and it works, but it's extremely directional. So unless you're filming and you need the audio directly in front of you, that's basically all you're gonna get. This guy is exclusive to Canon, but it gives you several different options. It gives you shotgun, 90 degrees, and 120 degrees audio. It also has this little auto button, which I absolutely love. So as long as it's on auto and it's plugged in, I know it's gonna get the job done. I'm pretty excited to take this outside and play. 
Hey guys, so today I'm testing out a camera. It is a quite a nice camera. It's the EOS M5 by Canon, and it's pretty cool. So I'm excited to test this out. I'm gonna go out for a test vlog. So here we are. Testing, testing, testing. Here's our first lens test. This is the 11 to 22. We're here at the dog park. <laughs> We're now testing out the 18 to 150 millimeter lens. This lens will allow you guys to zoom a lot more. testing out this is a 15 to 45 millimeter let's see how the dog park likes this one Another feature that I've been really into is time-lapse movie mode. So basically, you can just combine all of these images that are shot into a single movie. I took it down to the beach to get a nice sunset time-lapse shot. I shot this with two second intervals, and I got it right as the sun went down. So I've been using this camera for about a week now. I have several videos on my channel that you guys didn't even know I was vlogging with this camera. I'll put links in the description if you guys wanna go check those out for a full look at what it looks like to vlog for a full day on this little guy. Pretty much for the past week, I've been traveling around with these three lenses. The one that I've been mostly been using is this one right here. This is the 11 to 22. It gives you enough zoom to zoom into things that are a little bit further away, but it also gives you a really nice wide angle shot of yourself. The second lens that I've been using is this 18 to 150. If you saw in some of the vlogs, I got some really long shots of my dog at the dog park. That's what I used this little guy for. And the focus on it was extremely quick. It was a lot faster than I thought it was gonna be. So I've been mostly using this for vlogging. So the flip down screen that goes this way is actually really good if you're just holding your camera like this. Because even if you do look down, it doesn't actually look like you're not looking at the lens, which is something that drives me crazy about vloggers. The lens is where you need to look. So if you do use this camera on a tripod, you might run into a little bit of an issue. I can still fold this down and be able to see enough of the screen to see if I'm in focus or see what I need to see. But if you do have a larger tripod, there's a good chance that you won't be able to see much of the screen. So that was really the only thing that I even ran into at all with this camera. I'm usually extremely picky about vlogging cameras. They have to have good audio. They have to be able to zoom and autofocus quickly. So for me, I think this is going to be pretty much my new on-the-go vlogging camera. It's a little bit bigger than the G7X, but it's definitely smaller than the 80D, so that makes it pretty much fit right in that sweet spot that I can throw this into my purse. A lot of times the onboard audio with these cameras aren't as good as I'd like, but surprisingly this was pretty good. So if you don't use a microphone, you're still okay. But since this does have an audio input, I definitely recommend it because it will increase your audio significantly. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any questions about this camera, feel free to ask me those in the comments below and hopefully I can help you guys out. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Tripods, I've got all kinds of things in here. So a lot of you guys thought that these cords were everything that I need to make this MacBook Pro actually functional. So far I've paired it down to one USB-C hub, a USB-C to Thunderbolt adapter, a USB-C powered hard drive, and the fourth cord I'm using